Kundave Prati took the leaf extended by Vandiyathevan and read it. Her face, which till then had been shriveled with furrowed brows, now blossomed and shone. He looked up at Valavaria and said, You have given the leaf. What do you intend to do next? Kundave Devi asked. Giving them the straw, my job is done. Now, I have to go back to town. Your work is not done, it has only just begun. What you say makes no sense, goddess. Has the prince written in this that you may be entrusted with any confidential work? Are you not going to act accordingly? I have come to the prince with such an agreement. But do not entrust me with any important work. I am asking you very much. I don't understand your request. Is it the tradition of the Abe clan to back down after agreeing to something? It is the legacy of the Abe clan to brag about fruit, it is the legacy of the Abe clan to concede and retreat. Then why the reluctance? Hatred of the female clan? Or just not liking me? The princess said and the young lady understood. Aha! What is this question? Will the ocean not catch the moon? If you don't like it, why is it trying to catch the full moon by stretching out a thousand wave arms? Who will say that the blue sky does not like the goddess Bomadavi? If you don't like it, why is the night staring at this earth with thousands of starry eyes? Does the cloud not catch the lightning? If you don't like it, why does it hug and hug the lightning that splits itself and flows? Is it because beetles don't like flowers? Then why does it ceaselessly circle around the flower and faint? Would anyone believe a whittle bug if it didn't catch a light bulb? If so, why does it fall into the light of the lamp and die? Goddess! You asked a good question. If I don't like them, why does their shop-eyed look so bewilder me? Why does the young jewel playing on the edge of their magazines make me so paranoid? So many thoughts appeared in Vandiyadeva's mind. But not with the tongue. Sir! You didn't answer my question? Do you hesitate whether a brave man born in the monkey clan would commit the abomination of a woman? When the prince gave you this leaf, didn't you tell me about what was written on it? Asked the princess again. Goddess! I set out knowing full well the prince's will. But it seems that I did not begin my pilgrimage. Therefore, I have made enemies along the way. I have made enemies of my best friends. Enemies are looking for me on all four sides. How can I be sure that I will fulfill the task they set me in this situation? I hesitate. Shouldn't I spoil their business? Valavarian said. Who are those enemies? Can you tell me? Kundave asked in a worried voice. The Palyavetareus have sent men from all quarters to hunt me down. My lifelong friend Kandamaran thinks that I have tried to kill him by stabbing him in the back. A valiant Vaishnava disguiser named Alvar Kadian is following me. Ila Irani Nandini Devi of Palaver has cast a spell on me. I don't know who I will fall prey to at any moment. Vandiyathevan remembered his experience with the sorcerer that night after escaping the flood. Considering the danger of traveling by day, he spent his time in bamboo forests and banana groves. He walked along the river bank at night. After walking a long distance, he reached a dilapidated old mandapam on the third night of the night. Outside the moon was shining like the afternoon sun. The moonlight was shining a little further inside the hall. Vandiyadeva crossed the light area and went to the dark area and lay down. As soon as I fell asleep with my eyes closed, the hoarse voice of an owl came from far away. He remembered hearing the same owl's voice when he was talking with Ilayarani in the Lata Mandapam of Palvur and woke up startled. Thinking that he can go outside, he walked two steps. I heard footsteps coming in from outside. He stood in its hiding place, holding on to a crumbling pillar. The face of the outsider was slightly visible in the moonlight. He came to know that he was the magician who had come to see the Queen of Pavur. The wizard came towards the pillar. Vandiyadeva thought that he did not know that he was hiding there and would go inside the hall without noticing him. But the sorcerer, who had been walking like a mellow cat until he came near the pillar, suddenly uttered a cry in a grotesque voice and seized Vandiyadeva's neck with one hand and scolded him. 
take it. Give me that palm tree ring. If you don't give it, I'll kill you by snapping your neck. He shouted. Vandiyadeva's neck seemed to break, his eyes looked like they were going to pop out. Suffocated. However, he made up his mind. Holding the old pillar with one hand, he raised one leg and kicked with all his might. The wizard fell down with a howl. At the same time the old pillar collapsed. Stones fell from the roof above. A bat flapped its wings and went out. Vandiyathevan also left after that. The runner never looked back until a short distance away. He stopped only after he was sure that no one was following him. Vandiyadeva's whole body trembled even now when he thought about the experience of that night. Amidst those terrible memories, sir. How long has it been since you left Kanji? Kuntava's voice fell on his ears and gave him peace of mind. It's been a week and a day, goddess. He said. It is strange that you have made so many enemies by now. How did you accomplish such a wonderful thing? That's a great story, goddess. There's no harm in that. Let's say. Only after knowing those details can I assign them the task. Having said this, the princess called the easy-going Shivbata to her side and asked, What kind of boatman is he? She asked. Both ears are goodly deaf, even if thunder strikes, mother. Very well. Let's get out of the boat and go down the stream a little way. Come. I want to hear his whole story. She said. Valavarayan attained the glory. Is it easy to get the privilege of going on the same boat with the women of the Chola clan? Shouldn't he have done penance in seven births to get it? After boarding the boat the story should be stretched and developed as far as possible. Don't end in a nutshell. What's the rush? Can we easily let a rare privilege slip away? Vandiyathevan is in no hurry. But as the boat drifted down the stream, he began to tell what had happened in the Kadampur Sambhavarayar mansion. What's up? Then what? Asking that, she hastened. Vandiyathevan developed the story as far as he decided. No matter how long the story is, the end must come to an end. When the story was over, the boat came back to Oday Padidura. As they disembarked from the boat and entered the park, musical instruments and flutes rang out as a sign that the palace was still haunted. Hearing this, Valavarayan said, The miser may have been very deceitful. But he helped me yesterday. He said. What is it? What could Gumsan have done for you? Asked Ile Aprati. It was Gumsan who helped me enter this city. Vandiyathevan said. Then he told the history of that help. Vandiyathevan had assumed that Palyavatarayar's men would have arrived by the time he arrived at Palyara. They will wait at every entrance to the city. If there is any doubt, they will take it away. How to enter the old city without getting caught by them? With this concern, when Vandiyathevan was standing at Arizalankare, a short distance from the main gate of the city, a drama troupe came. Disguised persons like Kanan, Baladeva, Kamsan etc. came. Among them only Kamsan wore a wooden face. Vandiyathevan had an idea. He gave a speech to the theater group. He said that the acting skills are not enough for the person wearing the guise of Kamsan. Kamsa the adulterer came to fight with him. Will Valavarayan give up the fight easily? I can dance better than you. See. Saying that, he grabbed the mask forcefully and shook it. At that time those who saw his tumultuous footsteps admired him. They also said that his playing was more appropriate. Kam saw the adulterer got angry and left. If he goes, let him go, I will come and dance with you into the city, agreed Vandiyathevan. The theatre troupe gladly took him with them. After all the games and lessons were over in the streets of Padayare, Vandiyathevan went to the Vadamarali temple as directed by Aditha Kari Kalar and met and talked with Isanabatar. He made him stay in the Jain grove surrounding the temple and brought the princess Kuntha through the stream, informing Prati ahead of him. Hearing these details, the princess looked at Vandiyathevan with wide eyes and said, The mercy of the goddess of victory, Koratave, is perfect for this Chola clan. 
That is why the goddess has sent herself to help me in this embarrassing situation. She said. Queen. You haven't given me any task yet? It's not yet time to show my full potential. Said Valavarayan. Don't worry about it. I'm going to give this guy a job so risky that all the risks he's taking are nothing. She said. Vandiyathevan stood with his heart full of anger. He was determined to cross the seven seas, fight unarmed with a thousand lions, climb the top of Mount Meru and pluck the stars with his hands in order to fulfill the mission of the goddess. In the middle of the palace Nandavan was a Vasantha Mandapam made of marble. She stooped towards it. Batar and Vandiyadevan followed the princess. Kundave took a small piece of palm leaf and a gold-handled pen from one of the bell towers in the hall. She wrote like this and drew a small picture like a fig leaf underneath. As Vandiyathevan held out the leaf for hand, he said, Take this leaf without delay and go to the country of Elam. Give it to Prince Aromas Hivarmar and bring him with you. She said. Vandiyadeva staggered with waves of bliss. One of the two wishes he had for a long time was fulfilled. I have met the youngest Prati, the lamp of the Chola clan. It is through him that the second wish is also going to be fulfilled. You will get the chance to meet Prince Aromas Hivarmar. Goddess. You are giving me the task of my heart. I will take the straw and leave now. Saying that, he extended his right hand to receive the leaf. Her fingers with the canthal flower touched Vandiyadeva's lucky hand as Kundave gave him the leaf. His voice was thrilled, my chest felt like it would explode. A thousand and ten thousand silkworms flapped their feathers and flew in front of him. A thousand and ten thousand quills sang together. Mountains and mountains of colorful flowers fell on him and scattered in all directions. In this position Vandiyadeva raised his head and looked at Kundave Devi. He wanted to say something. But what power does lifeless mere words have to say that? His eyes said everything that needed to be said. At that time, if Kalita Sana did not write love poems similar to the poems written by Vandiyadeva's eyes, what else should we say if the poets of Palandamalai who wrote Muthalayaram did not write them? Somewhere outside the Vasantha Mandapath, the rustling of dry leaves rustled. Izana Shivbata raised his voice. Vandiyathevan came to this world.